Okay, it looks like we are live on Facebook. Um, hello, everyone. It is Reverend Carolyn McGee. I am here with Reverend Don Simpson um, for Sunday Morning Grace. It is uh, our pleasure to be here for the Divine Order of the Sacred Rose as ministers to help you connect in with um, this week. It's your own inner voice, which is your way of processing the divine information that is always available to us. So as always, open up your bodies, settle yourselves in. I am feeling a need this time to feel how supported you are. Whatever you're sitting in, wiggle your body back and forth. Feel your hips. Feel the bottoms of your thighs. Maybe the, your lower back being supported by the chair or a pillow. Just really understand how supported you are by whatever you're sitting on or leaning against. And then I'm gonna invite you to center yourself in your body. Just lean a little bit to the right so you feel slightly off center. And then come back, imagining that there is a pillar of light through your body that you're aligning your body with. And then lean a little bit over to the left. And then come back, imagining your personal energy aligning with that pillar of light going through your spinal column and out of your crown up into your own personal star. And now lean forward slightly. And then come back to that alignment, seeing that pillar of light moving all the way through your body, out of your body, down into the center of the earth, connecting in with Mother Earth herself. And then leaning slightly back and coming back into alignment with that beautiful pillar of light, which runs from that star, which is the divine masculine, all the way through your body, down into the center of the earth, the divine feminine, fully aligned, divine masculine, divine feminine, father, sky, mother, earth. And now lift your shoulders up as if you're trying to squeeze your shoulders into your ears, just out of the chair. And notice how that really solid feeling you had in your buttocks and your back is disconnected from the chair. And whoo, drop yourself back in. And again, notice how connected and supported you are by this chair or whatever it is you're sitting on. <clears throat> and now put your hands on your heart and just feel your heart beating. Your heart is your most intuitive muscle. It knows the truth. It's that personal GPS. It's the barometer for you inner voice, the filter for your words and communications. Let's just sit here for a moment of silence. Ask your inner voice what it wants you to know. I'm sure there's lots and lots of messages, but let's ask our inner voice for just one message the one that's most important in this moment. And just breathe into the silence and receive that message.
And now coming back into this time and this space, releasing that pillar of white light. But still noticing how supported you are. I invite you to grab your journal or a piece of paper if you don't have one and write down your message so that we can support you on listening to that inner voice. So welcome, Dawn. Mm. Thank you. Um, good morning. Hello, everybody, wherever you are. That was delicious, Carolyn. Thank you. It really, really was. I liked how we really felt our bodies going into that pillar of light, you know, and by kind of stepping out of that pillar and stepping into it, you really are allowing yourself to feel it. And I hope that you were able to feel that and what that experience was for you inside of your body. That was really, really good. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. And do you want to share what your message was from your inner voice? I will. Um, and it's funny because I kind of got the same message again in my, this morning, I have, um, I have a journal. It's called What's Today For? And so my What's Today For message was about um, unity. And the message that came in was when we were doing this meditation was about connecting to my star and that I am a star and that, that today I should, um, well, I'm invited to shine that starlight out even brighter and do we do it in magical ways. So I get to get creative with how I shine my light in, in that sparkle out. Cause I do have a, a very busy schedule today and I will be out with people. So doing sessions and I will think about getting creative on how I can shine my star's light and sprinkle my lightness into wherever I am. That's beautiful. And uh, for those of you who are on Facebook, or maybe even watching later, um, I invite you to type and in the, whoops, of you who are on Facebook, checking Facebook or right here, <laughs> seeing if we've got any <laughs> comments. Um, yeah, put it down in the comments and let us know so that we can come back and, um, and support you on that. Uh, so mine was um, asking me to do more deliberate stillness. I do a lot of stillness. I'm not, I have more natural sounds. Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got a fountain going in the background. I get outside and I have the windows open and I have the birds coming in here. So I, I live in a state of like not artificial noise. I don't listen to a lot of music. I don't have the TV going, et cetera. Um, and, but I don't often because I'm in stillness, drop into stillness and there's, a differentiator for us because I am and it's and I think it's an invitation for others out there to think about the same thing you know we all hear our inner voice and I choose that style of stillness you know not having the tv not having music because it helps me connect in each moment more it, it I've developed it over time it works for me but because I've become accustomed to it I do don't deliberately stop and connect in. And so therefore I'm sure I'm missing another layer of information. And there may be others of you out there too that have a certain way of engaging and listening and hearing our inner voices, but maybe we become a little bit complacent. That's the word they're using, complacent <laughs> about our connections. So it's an invitation. Um, no wrong, just an invitation to do things a little bit differently. Mix it up, guys. Try something, um, you know, a little bit maybe more deliberate. Yeah, more deliberate. And I will be joining you in that. <laughs> mm, yeah, absolutely. And 
this is a great place to get new ideas and to get inspired to make some changes and try different things and try new things. Uh, I am always getting new things and I, you know, new ways of doing things. And I listen to these things and uh, podcasts and I get new ideas to bring into my own life too. You know, you, if you listen to podcasts and you get a lot of inspiration and you just take from it what mm-hmm. inspires you and leave the rest. Um, but, you know, aligning with your inner voice and what is it saying? What are you hearing? What are you feeling? Because an inner voice doesn't always have to come across in a voice, right? It doesn't, you don't have to hear it or hear something in your ear. Your inner voice may be, because if you're not hearing it, it may go to a different way of you to listen. Maybe, um, maybe you'll experience it in some kind of discomfort or some kind of energy shift that you feel in your body or maybe you pay attention to numbers you know so you're seeing things and then you go in and say okay well when i see you know 111 to me it means this so then you go in and you listen to your connecting you know to your inner voice and what is that saying and as you pointed carolyn earlier in the meditation that our heart is our most intuitive muscle and i love how you said that because it's it truly is when I have a session with somebody and um, actually I just had a client the other day and I did this with her. And I, I honestly think this is one of the coolest tricks that we've learned. Carolyn and I, uh, Carolyn and I learned this trick doing our, our, um, our studies with Angel Teach. And <clears throat> we, uh, you know, what I did with the client, you know, she was questioning, wondering, you know, what should she do about a certain situation in her life? Uh, she had two paths that she could go and she didn't know. And I, and I like to say, if you, you know, if you have to ask, you, you kind of know the answer. And I think sometimes we just want validation after validation after validation, because we're always questioning ourselves and questioning what we think, because, you know, we just, we're just questioning ourselves and we don't always trust what we're thinking. So I did the, the paper um, I had, I had taken, so there was two things that she was wondering, should I do this or should I do that? And so I took four pieces of blank pieces of paper and I put the two things on each of the papers. And then the other one I put like, I love chocolate and I love sunny days. Like that. I, I, and so I mixed them all up so she didn't know. And I said, all right, I'm gonna take you out of your head, uh-huh. out of your head and into your heart. So what we did was we took these pieces of paper one at a time and we put them on her heart and I held the space with her. Just put um, the, the words that were on the piece of paper on her heart. And she just sat with her for a few minutes and then she listened to her body because she didn't know what was on the pieces of paper, but her heart knew the energy of that, what was on there. So her heart knew how to respond to that energy, the words that were on the paper. And I said, just write on the back of the paper, what you felt, what you heard, what you knew, you know, what you experienced and put it aside and do it with. So we did that for all four, all four pieces of paper. And she knew what she this is what I mean. She knew what she really wanted to do, what she needed to do. And that's, that's what came through on her, you know, through her papers. So, you know, like I say, you, we always say this, you can't make this stuff, you know, your heart knows. Yeah. And that's the coolest trick. So try yeah. it seriously. Yeah, it definitely does. And when we deny our heart or when we deny that knowingness in our body, that's when the body reacts. You know, if you've got chronic lower back pain, if you've got, you know, intestinal issues, you've got a chronic migraine, your body is holding back or or refusing or you're refusing to listen to your body's signals. And that's part of the whole inner voice um, aspect. Like Don mentioned, it's not just what we hear. It's not just what we see. It's that sensation that we get on our skin, you know, when the hairs on our arms stand straight up because there's something that our body is trying to get us to pay attention to. It could be excitement. It could be fear. Dropping into your body and allowing that voice of your body to give you an answer is just going, it's more information. It's more ways of finding out data that you can utilize to put that puzzle together. 
Maybe you don't even know the questions to ask your heart yet, but you know that there's bits and pieces of information to get, to, to pull together. So, you know, become a detective. You know, I, I have a, a friend who um, loves to say, hmm, isn't that curious? And I think that that's such a beautiful way to look at things is just be curious about it. Become an investigator. I'm kind of getting the image of Sherlock Holmes in his hat. I want to go out and buy that <laughs> as a prop right now. <laughs> but just to, you know, to have fun with it, right? To be lighthearted. I think that's why they were showing me the image and making me laugh is, um, you know, we can get so serious sometimes. And you, your guides and your angels and God, the universe, they, they want us to have fun. They want us to be joyful. You know, our truest essence is love. At the core, we are all love. And if we can live that way and make our choices that way in faith and in love and in joy, then, you know, life is so much richer and easier, you know, because we're not battle. You can't be in love and in battle at the same time. You just can't be. No, they can't exist in the same environment. Um, another way that I'm thinking of that just kind of came to me is using oracle cards. Mm -hmm. So if you are home, you're alone, you don't have any um, anybody to validate what you're thinking or anybody to bounce it off of in the moment, um, Use your oracle card. So whether it's an angel deck, a tarot card deck, use some kind of oracle. And, and it could be looking outside. Go, okay, I, I want my message from outside. Kind of look outside and, you know, and then go within with the message that you feel that you're receiving. But draw a card, you know, and then like shuffle your cards with intention. So if you're using an oracle deck, okay, you know, what do I need to know about this situation? If you're, you know, going back and forth in your mind or you're trying to connect with that inner voice, like what am I missing today? What is my inner voice trying to get? The, what messages that my mm -hmm. inner voice trying to get to me today? And if you kind of feel locked or you're not hearing anything, use your oracle cards, um, you know, and, and shuffle with the intention of what, am I missing anything? What is my message for today? And put the energy of that question into the deck as you're shuffling. And then go to the card that feels like it's your card for your message. And when you do pull your card or cards, tune into what, how the message is coming to you. What is your inner voice saying to you when you're drawing that card and you're looking at that card and you're feeling the card? And you can even do the same thing. Take that card and put it on your heart. Oh, yeah. As you said, your, you know, your strongest intuitive muscle. Put the card on your heart and close your eyes and just be with that card, be with that message. And you might get an image. You might hear something in your voice. You might get this overall body sensation. You might, like you said, Carolyn, get the hairs that stand up in, in excitement or, or that it's validating what you already know, you know? And, and so use that as validation. And, and that's a great tool to use when you, um, you know, want some validation or you just feel like you're just not, you don't feel like you're receiving the message that you are wanting to receive in this particular moment in time, right? Yeah, and oftentimes, you know, our heads, beautiful, logical brains here, we all have them, but sometimes they, out of wanting to protect us, create that confusion. There's a fear around taking that step, maybe because it's associated with something dangerous in the past or perceived to be dangerous. You know, we're all being run by little two-year-olds in the back of our mind <laughs> you know, who yeah. have fears, who have immature thoughts, who haven't really um, grown up into discernment or deliberation. That word just keeps rising back up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> so but allowing your body, your heart, that inner voice, that inner truth to speak and to drive the bus rather than that two-year-old of fear or resistance or um, 
judge or whatever it is that's living, it, you know, deliberately trying to keep you safe. You know, there's, there's no negative here associated with that. But it's really, who do you want to be driving the bus of your life? Do you want it to be that fearful young voice or do you want it to be your divine connection? And, you know, I know that even as much work as I've done, <laughs> occasionally the two-year-old gets behind the wheel <laughs> and I have to drop into that stillness and make a change, make a, here we go again, a deliberate change. It's that intentionality of what energy do I want to be in? And you know, here's a great example. Yesterday I was getting ready to go out with a friend. It's, it's warm down here. We were gonna go to a nursery because today is the first day of spring. And it's just like this pattern. Even though I've only been here for a year, we've developed the first day of spring. We go to a nursery and just check things out. I was looking for a pair of shorts and I couldn't find them. The two-year-old started having a fit. Where are they? Winging stuff. It was actually pretty comical. My dog was like, what? And then I took a deep breath and I dropped into my heart center and I knew which drawer to open and find them. And it was instantaneous. So I went from a tantrum into serenity in a moment. And we can all do that. And we all have those moments. And you know, it, the, who wants to admit that we all have those moments, but we do. We do. If mine was just colorful because of the clothing flying around. <laughs> but hey, I decided I was going to leave it all out and sort and give away what I don't wear. So twofold purpose. Maybe it was divinely intended that they pushed me so that I would clean out that another drawer. Who knows? The bottom line is I listened to my voice. And I got two beautiful things. I immediately knew where to look. And I was reminded that it's good to release things. And that's what our, that inner clutter is, right? Whether it's clothes in your drawer, in your closet, a pile of papers, it's all clutter that's blocking us from hearing that inner voice. And so I got a two for one yesterday. Good deal. Good deal. Kind of human, you know, that two-year-old does, you know, rear its head often, some, sometimes more often for some of us, but it's okay because, you know, like you just said, you saw the blessing in it and, you know, yeah, you know, you had a little, we call it hissy fit, right? Um, yes, where are these dang shorts, <laughs> but then you ended up doing some spring cleaning, you know, the day before spring, you got some spring cleaning done, right? Yeah, so it, it was a win-win. It's totally a win-win. And it's, and it's being able to, you know, again, go back and laugh at ourselves. Find the, the lightness, get curious about things. Because I, as I was walking out to my neighbor's car, I'm thinking, what the, what the what, you know? <laughs> like, why did that have to happen? And then when I got back later on and I saw the clothes, I'm like, oh, I am, I just took everything else out of the drawer and added it to the bed. I'm like, I'm not, I know what that is now. I need to sort through this stuff. You know, I moved this stuff from Massachusetts and it's been sitting in a drawer for almost a year and a half. And it probably hadn't been worn before that. So it's time for somebody else to utilize it. But it 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 had to be in my face. And you know, that's that's the inner voice sometimes. It's almost like that, that article of clothing that's stuck in a drawer. If you don't open up the drawer, you forget it's there. But it's taking that's up like space, it's taking up energy. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's it's holding something that isn't needed. And you know, I got a really clear thing of that when I opened up the drawer and there it was full. And it's full of clothes that I don't wear anymore. They don't fit they don't fit my personality anymore you know uh so it's and they may not fit me who knows <laughs> i'll be i'll be doing that re releasing procedure holding it to my heart do i keep do i keep it or not trusting my heart my inner guidance machine here and 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 releasing and i think that it's we can do that with everything we can do it with 
energy that we're holding in our body. We can do it with thought patterns that we have. We can do it with relationships that we're holding on to that might not really be serving us. And we know that inner voice knows if we just slow down enough to allow ourselves to hear it. The other thing that was coming into my head before we close for today is dream time. So when we're dreaming, our egos and our conscious mind is sleeping. So if we're not paying attention to the messages and the voice that, that, that is trying to connect with us to come through, it will come through in our dreams unconsciously. And it'll play itself out in a little silly, crazy, you know, in a, in a way, in that kind of way. And so keep a dream journal near your bed. And I mean, I find correlations with where I am with like in a relationship with someone is how it'll show up in my dream. And sometimes I can interpret, maybe there's a message that I need to, you know, pick up on or, or an emotion or a feeling or a direction or whatever the case may be, it'll come through my dream. You know, that person may pop into my dream in a weird way, Yeah. but you know, so you, you pull the message from it because again, your inner voice is going to try and talk to you as many ways as it can until you hear it, you know, Absolutely. if you're not, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you're not hearing with your ears or your eyes and maybe you'll, maybe they'll get you while you sleep and get you when you're mm -hmm. out and put it yeah. in a dream. And so keep a dream journal. I do invite you to keep a dream journal and what is coming through there? What message? Do you see a pattern? Do you see a same message? You know, do you see a, a, a similar direction happening in your in your dreams, you know, pull all the things that are similar in your dreams, whether it be the person or the situations or the emotions, you know, pull all that out and, and receive the message that the, the inner voice piece that the, the message that come through for you. So, yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's like a piece of the puzzle, like, like you were just saying, Don, mm -hmm. where you need to keep your journal and other times it's something very deliberate. You know, I, um, I have been starting to date again and I was talking to this one person and it was, you know, kind of, yeah, I'm not sure, whatever, but, you know, back and forth. And then I had a dream that was like a nightmare of this person, like worst case scenario. So like, like really giving me the, you know, in your face, this is not good <laughs> stuff. And so I woke up and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to mess the gym we're not a fit because obviously <laughs> my guides know better than I do and so moving on um but it was you know I think the more resistant we are to the messages that we get in our daily lives the more intense our dreams are going to be because they're going to try and really slam home the information that we're not catching during the day so uh, that was another reminder for me to start paying more attention because I could go back and think about the messages that I had gotten during the day that I ignored or that I tried to justify, you know, all of that stuff, right? They, right. they weren't like red flags to you, right? But your guides, your, your higher self knew that those were red flags for you and you were for like, me, oh. exactly. yeah. Right. And you weren't taking them as the red flags and they may Absolutely. not have been like huge red flags, but they were red flags for your energy. And it just wouldn't the have been you know, not, a match. It, it, right? Exactly. Exactly. And you know, it seems like a very nice person who probably is, but not the right person for me. Right. And I was not filtering that. So my guides made sure that I really got it quite clearly. And I'm grateful for that because, you know, I, I like shortcuts. You know, I think that's yeah. my, that's my nature. I, yeah. I like cutting to the chase here. Yes. And, We're a um, microwave society. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. But how beautiful was that, that I was able to do that and see it and understand right. it. And, right. and then, yeah, I've had those messages like you have, where they've been little, you know, bits, of, a little bit in this one and a little bit in that one. And if I wasn't keeping track of things, and I'd, I'd miss what the story was, the big yeah. story. Yeah. That's why we really push journaling and, 
and keeping yeah. those thoughts and keeping those synchronicities and those things that happen that don't seem to make sense or it's just one piece of the puzzle and you don't have all the pieces yet they're coming you know but if you keep track of them in a in a journal and you actually go back and read it you know it's, we're good with writing it we don't always go with going back and reading it um so yeah it, it, you know just we're just trying to give you things to help you listen and pay attention and um you know unite with your inner voice yeah. in any way that you know is right for you so yeah, yeah. And that is the power right there. Absolutely. Is right for you, because what's right for me isn't necessarily going to be right for Dawn, even though we've got a lot of similarities. And what's right for Dawn isn't going to be right for those of you guys out there watching. Or it might be, but we don't yeah. know. It's it just it's dropping into your own inner authority, your own your personal GPS. It's your guidance system. Yeah. And it's beautiful. What a gift we have been given to be able to utilize that. Yeah, it's there's just such power in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we um, hope you got some good takeaways from this morning. And uh, gosh, I feel like we did put a lot of meat in there this morning and so you know if you need to re-listen re-listen and actually go back to that um meditation that you did that delicious meditation that you did to you know experience that as often as you can and if you can do it on your own fine if you you know it's it's nice to be led into it too and guided you know by carolyn's voice to guide you into connect with that color of light so yeah lots of invitations in here for you today hope that they've been helpful yes and definitely you know my invitation to close here is to communicate you know reach out i think you know over the last couple of years we have all become a little bit more isolated sometimes physically and sometimes just spiritually um, and it's it's wonderful to tap into our inner voice it is so critically important but it's also important to tap into the community that we have here at, um, you know, at Divine Order, the Sacred Rose. So, you know, you utilize the gift of community that we have here. If you need some guidance, if you need a, a touchstone, if you need someone to share with, we're here. Yeah, I got my little touchstone. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, whatever resonates for you, yeah. use it. Use Absolutely. It. it only works. Use it. Yay. So shall we close with our tenants? We shall. I open my heart with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's purpose through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all good. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my truth. I listen to the spiritual messages in my physical body. I express myself creatively. I am one with Mother Earth. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you all for joining mm -hmm. us. And we'll be checking in to see if you have any comments or connection requests. And just remember you are not alone. Bye -bye. Be well, and we will see you next time.
Yes, Thank you for will. being here with us. Bye for now.